I warned my husband not to let his messy sister's family move in, they did anyway, made a disgusting mess, and now his entire family hates me for kicking them out. My husband has two brothers and one sister. His sister and her husband are not my favorite people in the world. Recently, they, along with their eight children, have been couch surfing because they lost their home, a long story that could have been avoided if they hadn't acted like adults. First, they stayed with my in-laws, but my in-laws used the excuse that my father-in-law has diabetes to get rid of them and their rowdy children. Next was his older brother and his wife. They had two spare rooms since two of their older children moved out a year ago, and they only have a six-year-old and their 13-year-old twins at home. After three weeks, they had to move out due to a planned refurbishment. They were happy with them, as they were generally tidy and helped out around the house. The youngest brother was the next to take them in. While my sister-in-law was there, she helped out around the house and kept her children under control. The youngest brother's wife is very house-proud, and she allowed them to stay for a limited time only, as they recently had a baby and her mother will be staying with them to help out for the first six months. Then they emotionally manipulated my husband into saying yes. I agreed to it on the condition that she, her husband, and their children keep the place clean because, in the past, the only place they are messy is in my home. For example, if they are throwing something into the kitchen bin, they throw it in the general direction of the bin but not actually in it. It's extra gross when it's food that dries up and stinks. Similar things have happened before, like when she would leave her sanitary towels on top of the bathroom bin lid instead of inside the bin. Her oldest daughter recently started her period, so I asked the younger brother's wife how things were in terms of tidiness. She said she had no complaints, they went to bed on time and kept the place clean. However, they were only there for two weeks. They are always tidy at the other houses, I know this from experience too. During Christmas and summer holidays, when we stay at each other's places, I've noticed the difference in how they behave at my house compared to the other places. Before they moved in, I made the younger brother and my in-laws witnesses to them agreeing to keep my house as clean as it is and to chip in with chores. If they broke the rules, they would be out immediately. She fussed and denied past wrongdoings but sarcastically said, As you wish, your highness. The first five days were smooth sailing. This morning, I found a sanitary towel on top of the bin, not even wrapped properly. But that's not all. Her daughter is staying in my daughter's room, and she made a mess of the shampoo and conditioner in the bathroom. She also left a tampon on the side of the sink, forgetting it from the night before. Her husband leaves early for work, and the kitchen was a mess by the time I got downstairs. I have a curious toddler, and I don't want him picking up a bloodied sanitary towel. I knocked on the guest room and told her to pack her stuff and get out. She looked angry and tried to play innocent, saying it was just some blood and to throw it in the bin if it bothered me so much. I told her no, then picked up her suitcase and started packing their things. At first, she refused to leave, saying she was going to wait for her brother because she doesn't take orders from me. But I reminded her that this house belongs to me too. I dropped her and her youngest kids off at my in-laws. A few hours ago, her husband came back from work, and when I wouldn't let him in, he made a scene. He went to my in-laws, but they don't want them there due to my father-in-law's illness. When my husband returned from work, my in-laws showed up in our driveway with her and her family within 20 minutes. They are still standing outside, squabbling about being let in. I refused to open the door and told my husband that if he backed down, he wouldn't be welcome in our home either. Now, the family thinks I'm the jerk because I've never liked her and I'm using any excuse to get rid of her. Commenter. Is there any reason why she might be targeting you? Maybe she's jealous of your looks or the closeness you have with your husband. Ops response. I'd say I look average. I'm slightly taller than her at 5 feet 8 inches. While she's 5 feet 6 inches. She's a bit bigger than me but then again, she's been pregnant 8 times and I've only had 3 pregnancies. She has medium length bleach blonde hair. Well, I've kept my natural red, which is long now, all my life because chemicals irritate my skin and scalp. She looks okay, not supermodel material, but neither am I. She's bossed around all her brothers, not just my husband. My husband used to give in to everyone's whims, but since we got together, he's been doing less and less of that because he wants to spend more time with me and our family. Update one day later. Yesterday, my driveway looked like a scene from a Mexican standoff. They were outside discussing the matter while I refused to go out and engage. After two hours, yes, two whole hours, they finally left. They're currently at my in-laws, but they made a promise to return tomorrow to discuss the matter when everyone is home from work, so we can supposedly find a workable solution. Well, at least that's what my husband relayed to me. When my husband got inside, I told him that I would not have them in my house. I said that if he wanted them there, he could clean up after them, which he did. After cleaning, he asked me why I made him do it. I told him I was just as grossed out by other people's bodily fluids as he was, and unlike him, I wasn't biologically related to them. So if he found it unpleasant, imagine how awful I felt in the past cleaning up after them. He promised to buy a new bin and bleach the sink three times. Our strategy for tomorrow is that under no circumstances will they be coming to live with us. His niece will be made to clean up the bathroom shampoo and conditioner mess, he left that part for her. In the meantime, our daughter can use our shower. We'll see how this turns out tomorrow. Second update two days later. Yesterday was a long day at my in-laws. We went early to get it over with. My in-laws started with a guilt trip, mentioning that they would take them in until they found a place, but due to my father-in-law's diabetes, it wouldn't be good for his health. I told them to have their daughter parent her children so they wouldn't run around like monkeys, and then they could stay with them since they have spare bedrooms. That didn't sit well with my sister-in-law. She went on a tirade, claiming that I've always been jealous of her and that I was trying to drive a wedge between her and her brother. I told her she didn't like her own life, so the idea that I was jealous of her was a stretch that required suspending reality. She asked my husband if he was okay with me telling him what to do with his family, 
pointing out that he always stays out of my family's business. She told him to lay down the law and say that she and her family would stay as long as it took for them to find a new place. My husband wasn't having any of it. He told her that the house was mine just as much as his, and it was a two yes one no deal. Just because I'm a stay-at-home parent now didn't mean I hadn't contributed to buying the house when I was working. The younger brother and his wife said they couldn't host them either, as his mother-in-law was staying with them due to the baby. The older ones mentioned their ongoing refurbishments. Both the younger and older brother's wives said I was exaggerating about the cleanliness, claiming she always kept her own house clean and their places clean as well. They told me to suck it up and act like family. I told them I wasn't there to argue about her cleanliness, as I saw what I saw, and her brother was a witness who had to clean it up. He confirmed that he did, and that I wasn't making it up. My sister-in-law then slipped up and asked her brother, why did you clean it up because, according to her, I was supposed to clean it up. Either she's the dumbest person alive for admitting that, or she knows she has the whole family wrapped around her finger. Either way, I made it clear that she wasn't staying with me. Since she gets along much better with everyone else in the family, they can figure out a solution among themselves. My husband told his niece that she was old enough to clean up the remaining mess, but she refused. Her father stepped in and said, she's your niece, but my daughter, don't you dare tell her what to do. Things got heated between them, so they both had to walk it off. I then told her and her husband that the only reason my husband and I were there was to get reimbursed for the bin we had to throw out due to her leaving biohazards around the house. She laughed in my face and said it would never happen. I responded, fine. I hope you realize that when I threw you out, I didn't pack all your belongings. I still had her daughter's switch, her husband's and the two younger ones' tablets, some of her jewelry and a few other items, as it all happened so quickly that day. I told her all of it would be sold to recuperate my costs. We left, but she was yelling loudly about what she would do to me if I dared to sell anything. My husband has my back, and he said to go ahead and sell whatever I needed to. Later on, they kept texting my husband, asking him to do them one last favor by putting up with her for a few months until she got back on her feet. I told him that, no matter what, I wouldn't agree to let her, her slobby husband, and her horde of children back in. They also texted me, trying to guilt me by bringing up his niece's education. Without a place to stay close to her school, she might have to switch to another school if they end up getting a rental outside of the school zone. I texted back, tough luck and blocked them. My husband won't block his parents, but he's pissed at his brothers for calling him selfish for not taking them in, considering they're going through a hard time. While they admitted it was gross, they excused her behavior by suggesting I might have aggravated it. To top it off, the oldest brother's wife left a voice message through her husband's number on my husband's WhatsApp. She said, get this, you're still okay to watch X's name, her six-year-old on Tuesdays and Wednesdays like usual, right? I told him to respond, figure out what the answer to that request is. So, that's where we're at now. Commenter, good for your husband for sticking up for you and backing you up. I can't believe the audacity of his family still expecting you to watch their child after all of this. OP's response, the sister-in-law isn't asking me to watch her child. It's the older brother's wife who wants me to continue watching her child as I've done until now. She works full-time and overtime on those days, but I no longer feel like helping her out. Third update two days later. I went to pick up my children and had to stay a little longer because a new family was moving to the area. The parents wanted to meet their children's classmates' parents, so we had a small meet and greet. While I was there, the office brought my husband's older brother's daughter, the six-year-old, to me, as I'm usually the one who picks her up on Tuesdays and Wednesdays. No one had come to get her, and when her teacher saw me waiting in the hallway, she asked an office admin to bring her over assuming I was just delayed due to the meeting with the new parents. I told them that I was no longer responsible for her on Tuesdays and Wednesdays. They took her back to the office, and I assume they must have called her mother. When I returned home from the meet and greet, my husband told me that his parents had called him and expressed their anger about me abandoning their granddaughter. They also put his older brother's wife on the phone, which led to a shouting match between her and my husband. Even the sister-in-law I kicked out had a few things to say. It ended with my husband telling his parents they had lost the privilege of talking to him for a week, and he would only unblock them when they gave both him and me a sincere apology. He explained to them that it was the parents' responsibility to make pickup arrangements, especially after I had made it clear I would no longer provide free services. The sister-in-law I kicked out is staying with her parents for now. Her husband, along with their two younger children and two of the older ones, are staying with my in-laws. The other two older children and the remaining two younger ones are spread between the other two houses. They made an indirect threat, saying it would be a very temporary arrangement, as she promised it wouldn't take long for her to make her brother see the light. I think I'm in for a long ride. Commenter. What an amazing saga of entitled trash bag humans. I agree with most of the comments I've read, stating to remain strong, not let them back in your house, get home security and make sure the school is aware of who is allowed to pick up your children, as well as who you will no longer be responsible for. If they have a problem with the parents not picking up their kid, they can call the authorities and report a child has been abandoned at the school. I'd like to ask, why, when your sister-in-law admitted to leaving a tampon on your sink, didn't the rest of the family immediately tell her she's filthy and wrong? How the hell are they still siding with her, despite her no longer having the denial leg to stand on? How can they excuse that? You have a toddler, and they're leaving blood lying around in your home. In my opinion, this is definitely a line in the sand situation, not only with your sister-in-law and her family, but with the rest of the family as well. Discuss it with your husband, of course, but this seems like a get-behind-us-or-get-out-of-our-lives scenario. Why your family unit is being scapegoated or treated like the black sheep of the family, I can't say, but it needs to stop. 
They are unreasonably bullying you and your husband. Final thought. Why does your sister-in-law think your husband would side with her instead of his wife? She seems weirdly confident she can get him to cave. Not accusing your husband of anything, just wondering. Ops response. After she admitted it, they still thought I must have done something to make her behave that way. Surely she wouldn't act like a pig in my house if I didn't deserve it, since she's always clean in their homes. As for the other question, my husband has been a pushover when it comes to his family. He was always the one they threw under the bus. He and his sister were close because he always helped her whenever she snapped her fingers. Fourth update five days later. It's early in the morning, and I've only slept a few hours. I don't know if I'll be able to finish this in one sitting. On Friday I dropped off my children at school, and the older brother's wife was there at drop-off time. She followed me, and when I stopped to pick up a few things, she confronted me in the store parking lot. She was apologetic and wanted to make amends, but I wasn't having any of it. She said she was desperate because if she missed one more week of overtime, she would lose the project, as she's the lead and has to stay there to supervise. Her husband can't change his hours, so it has to be her who picks up their six-year-old. She also said it wasn't fair to hold a grudge against her child for a passing comment she made. I told her it wasn't a passing comment. She had laid the blame on me for our sister-in-law leaving biohazards in my home. She said she just wanted everyone to get along and was hoping to de-escalate the situation. I suggested she ask our sister-in-law for help, and she said she had already refused, claiming she could barely cope with her three children under seven. I then told her to ask the youngest brother's wife, since her mother was staying with her, giving her extra time and energy to help out, and they clearly preferred each other over me. She replied that the youngest wife wanted to focus on making early memories with her own child rather than helping her with her six-year-old. I told her to suck it up and find a solution with those she considered family, then went about my shopping. In the afternoon, when I went to pick up my little ones, she was there again, and after we left the pickup line, she followed me all the way home. To prevent her from parking and harassing me at my door, I blocked my driveway by parallel parking. I sent a text to my husband, asking him to let me know when he'd be home, so I could move the car. Not being able to park didn't stop her, she parked on the side road and came to my house anyway. She rang the doorbell but I didn't open the door. Then she went around to the back and knocked on my back door, saying I couldn't avoid her forever because we were family. I spoke to her through the window, as I didn't want her pushing her way inside if I opened the door and told her to leave or I'd call the police for harassment. She finally left. In the evening, someone rang the doorbell, and when I opened it, it was my mother and father-in-law. They said they wanted to come inside to apologize, so I let them in. They started by explaining how much the events of the last few days had affected them, then they said sorry and asked me to get back to normal. My mother-in-law added that sometimes you have to put up with some negativity from family, as life has its ups and downs and everything can't always be roses and rainbows. My husband stopped his mother and asked, then why do Op and I have to be the only ones on the receiving end of the negativity? When are you going to hold my sister and the others accountable for their behavior? They tried to guilt trip me into helping with the six-year-old, reminding me that her mother and I had previously been on good terms. I told them she lost that privilege when she chose her side. They asked if I could sleep at night knowing she might lose her job. I said yeah. My husband pointed out how much I had done for her without any financial compensation. They responded by saying I was home anyway, and one more potty trained child didn't make much difference to me over the past four years. I told them it did make a difference because I had made many sacrifices over the years for their daughter. I also added that if they couldn't convince the younger brother's wife to help, then they should forget about trying to coerce me into doing it. They wanted to know when I would return the stuff I was holding hostage. My husband stepped in and said that he, not me, was holding it hostage, and it would be returned when his sister paid for the damages. My father-in-law said that my sister-in-law would be within her rights to report the theft to the police. My husband calmly replied that she could do as she pleased. At this point, my husband revealed something I wasn't aware of. He told his parents to pass on a message to his sister. He had canceled the hotel and the activities, including the horseback riding, for his niece for the summer vacation. He explained that since he wasn't allowed to tell her to clean up her mess, because her father had said, who did he think he was to boss her around, he didn't feel any need to pay for her specific activities. He added that if her father questioned their uncle-niece relationship and his right to teach her some responsibility, then he saw no reason to contribute financially. This upset my mother-in-law, and she asked, you haven't really done that, have you? I thought we'd all have a great vacation. He confirmed that he had. They tried to make excuses, saying my sister-in-law had a lot on her plate with losing the house and having young children, but I wasn't having any of it. I told them her situation was due to her own poor choices, and bringing a ninth child into the mix wasn't going to improve things. My mother-in-law said every woman has the right to make her own decisions about family planning, her body, her choice, and I had no right to dictate what my sister-in-law should or shouldn't do. I asked her, like you're dictating to me right now, by weaseling your way into our home under the guise of an apology. She said it was different, that she wasn't telling me to have more or fewer children, as she loved grandchildren, the more the merrier. I told her she couldn't expect me to look after other people's children either. The less stress I have, the merrier I am. It also falls under my body and my choice. They turned to my husband and asked if he was really putting them through all of this just because we had decided to be less amiable over something they considered silly. He replied that scrubbing down the two bathrooms after his niece and sister wasn't exactly the highlight of his life. As they continued making excuses and lamenting over us not joining the family holiday and by canceling his sister's holiday, which they said was ruining the mood for everyone, we politely told them it was time to leave. On Saturday morning, we were woken up by someone frantically knocking on the door and ringing the doorbell. It was my sister-in-law and her eldest son. 
My husband told me he would handle it. When he opened the door, she tried to push her way in, but my husband blocked her. She was shouting, demanding to come inside so she could knock some sense into me. She threw $300 in my husband's face and yelled, is she happy now, that cradle snatching BTCH? I'm a year and a few months older than her, and she's just over two years older than him. She called me a jealous WHRE and a few other names, accusing me of ruining their family by manipulating him. She demanded that now that she had returned the money, my husband should rebook the vacation and activities ASAP. He told her it wouldn't happen, even if hell froze over. He asked her to wait outside while he grabbed something. He went inside, packed their belongings in a bag except for one of the tablets he had bought and was still paying insurance on. When he opened the door, he threw the bag at her. She cursed at him, telling him to grow up and threatening to report him for damaging her stuff. He calmly told her everything was caught on camera and if she wanted to take him to court, she should consider her children, since they could barely afford a roof over their heads, let alone a lawyer. Before closing the door in her face, he warned her not to step foot on our property again. She left without causing any more drama. My mother-in-law and father-in-law called and tried to talk some sense into us. My husband and I had already agreed to let them see our children under certain conditions. They argued that they had grandparent rights. I told them that, although I'm no lawyer, their rights are very limited in the state we live in. If they wanted to maintain a relationship with their grandchildren, they would need to start respecting me and my family. Right now, we're no contact with the other brothers, their wives, and my sister-in-law's family. We unblock them briefly to send a message and then block them again. If the older brother's children want to speak with us or spend time with us, that's fine. However, the six-year-old can only visit if her older siblings are there to supervise and only on weekends when we have time to host. There will be no more dropping by whenever they feel like it. If they let their parents use their numbers to contact us, we'll block them too. While we had everyone unblocked to send messages, the older brother's wife called me and offered to pay $7.50 an hour for the days I looked after her six-year-old. I told her, no thank you, I'll pass on that wonderful opportunity, and good luck finding childcare for that amount. She then texted me, offering to compensate me for the last three months to sweeten the deal, but I still said no. She begged me to reconsider, saying she had no one lined up for next week. I told her to figure out her own childcare. She started crying, and I have to admit, it was kind of satisfying. If that makes me a BTCH, I'll own it. She'll most likely lose her job, but as far as I'm concerned, it's not my circus, not my monkeys. The younger brother's wife asked if I could help with the baby once her mother goes back home, mentioning that I had helped the older brother's wife. I told her no, that wouldn't happen because I didn't want more regrets in life. However, when the baby grows up and wants to spend time with her uncle one-on-one, -on -one, they can come by if we have time to host them. In the meantime, I suggested she ask my sister-in-law for help when her mother leaves. As for my sister-in-law and her husband, they are completely blocked. Their children are also on the no-contact list, as things are very complicated with their parents. All of this has brought my husband and me closer, and I'm grateful for the support we've received. Going forward, I believe there will be less stress. It feels like a huge weight has been lifted off my shoulders. Thanks again for all the support. Hopefully, nothing new will happen, as they now know we mean business. Up in the comments. Regarding the summer vacation thing, we typically spend two weeks with my husband's family. It's been a family tradition for them since childhood, no time with friends or other family, always the last two weeks of July together. I knew we'd be spending the summer with them before all this drama unfolded, but I had no idea my husband had paid for my sister-in-law's trip this year. He apologized for it and told me everything had been canceled. He had covered most of the costs for her and her family in previous years too. Due to their financial struggles, the others pay their own way. I never minded, as we have a joint account and separate accounts we use without consulting each other. Since I stopped working, he's also been adding money monthly to my personal account as he does to his own. He expressed regret for being so generous with them and apologized again for not telling me earlier. He showed me proof that he canceled the vacation on the same day I took her out, but with all the chaos he had forgotten to mention it. Needless to say, we're creating our own holiday traditions moving forward. 